temple. He's in the holiest of holies, right? And the angel appears unto him and says what? <coughs> you're going to have a son, and you're going to name his, your son John, right? Remember, he prophesied that. He said, you're going to have a son, okay? And what happens? Look at what the, the, the angel says in verse number 16. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God. Look at verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. To turn the hearts of the fathers of their children to disobedient wisdom and that, and that. Okay, we don't need to finish that, but you get the point, right? So you have three times here. John the Baptist is clearly coinciding with Elias. Elias or Elijah. Okay? Now what's cool about that? Well, so then the Feast of Unleavened Bread begins on the 15th day of the first month of Nisan. And this is a likely date for the birth of John the Baptist. The expected Elijah. Why? Remember at this time, Jesus would have been three months along in the womb of Mary at the time John the Baptist was born. Okay, now think about this. You, those of you who have sat through our Passover Seder meal, right? You know that Elias has a significant role in the Passover. Why? Can anybody remember? I'll give you one clue. The empty seat and the empty cup. The empty seat and the empty cup are for who? Ronald McDonald? No, they're for Elijah. And what do they say at the end of every Passover meal? Remember that the kid runs to the door and opens the door and welcomes who? Okay, welcomes Elijah. And says, Elijah, if you're here, come in. We welcome you. Okay, they're waiting for Elijah to come. Right? He did come. Why? Because he was born. He was born within a week at least a week of Passover. Now I'm saying, if he's born within a week of Passover, sometime within that time frame, don't you think that it's probably likely, uh, likely that he was born on Passover? Since he plays such a significant role in the Passover Seder? Of course. Okay, I don't think that's far-fetched to bring it around to that. Now look at this. We need only move six months farther down the Jewish calendar to arrive at a likely date for the birth of Jesus Christ, right? Okay, that's pretty simple. So as long as we know exactly when John the Baptist was conceived, we can place the birth of Jesus Christ within a week or two. Absolutely within a week or two of the day. Not the exact day, mind you, but with the, feet, with the help of these feasts, I certainly think we can get it pretty close. Okay? From the 15th day of the first month of the sun, we go to the 15th day of the seventh month of Tishri. And what do we find on that day? Well, here's what's cool. It is the Festival of Tabernacles. Now, to you, who don't study the Jewish uh, festivals, if you don't, or the feasts, that probably means nothing to you. So, uh, what's the significance? When you know what they're celebrating in the Feast of Tabernacles, you're going to look at it and go, oh, oh, oh. the way in which Jesus Christ was born was the fulfillment of this feast. Let me show you the Festival of Tabernacles, the 15th day of Tisha, begins the third and last festival of the year to which all the men of Israel would gather in Jerusalem for the temple services. Okay? They were all required to go to Jerusalem to partake and sacrifice on this day of tabernacles. Okay? Uh, don't we recall something about it being really crowded around Jerusalem at that time? Now look, I've never bought this theory that it was crowded because the world was being taxed. Okay? And there was a census going on. I've never bought that theory. Because that doesn't make one area more crowded than another area. All you're doing is shifting one group of people from one place and another group of people to another place. Amen. That doesn't make one central place more crowded. Amen. Okay? Yep. But yeah, five miles outside of Jerusalem, you have Bethlehem. Okay? Bethlehem of Rada, by the way. And it's packed. Could you imagine? You got every Jew in Israel coming to Jerusalem so that they could sacrifice in the temple. No wonder they couldn't find a place in the end. But you know what? God had it all prepared. The reason why he didn't want them to spend the night in the end was because he had other plans for them. He wanted them to fulfill the Feast of Tabernacles. Let me show you. Feast of Tabernacles is also called Sukkot. Okay, you can find it in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 42 through 43. Let's look at that real quick tonight, if you don't mind. Because I want you to see this, what God called for. 